The issue of school violence is certainly not anything new. I can't help feeling that the education department has been somewhat on the back foot in responding to how violence should be dealt with in school. And certainly in trying to curb it where it's learner to teacher violence rather than teacher to learner violence. Well, absolutely, Cathy. It's an issue that has just been preoccupying them for some time. So exactly it's how they characterize it. So they are saying there is so much internal threats whereby you have a learner and a teacher as opposed to external factors where it's a bunch of bandits raiding a school. So that's why they are saying now they are working around beefing up the psychosocial support. So there will be this urgent meeting with the Minister of Police, Social Development, and some members of the school governing body uh, organizations so that they can try to look at how they can minimize. Because, I mean, schools should be the most friendly places for these pupils. And it's highly concerning, Cathy, because there is one particular incident in Zerus last week where a teacher was stabbed to death by people, and the minister, after the press briefing, had to rush to this particular family. Let's talk about that, that incident that took place um, in, in the Northwest, which you're talking about. When it comes to the internal threats um, that, that the minister is, is referencing here, are they saying that, or rather, what are they attributing the causes of this increase in violence, especially from the side of learners towards teachers? Where do they think it's coming from? The minister was at pains to say it's a reflection of our society. Recently we saw the crime statistics and pointing very clear some very high socioeconomic challenges we're facing as the country and just a very high number when it comes to contact crimes and so she was trying to expound and explain really some of uh, all these challenges. Perhaps Cathy, I think it's time to really listen to that particular bite where she explains. Also I think from yourselves from the media, the death of the youngsters in Gauteng. There was a horrific accident last week in Pumalanga where six learners perished. There's a learner drowned in KZN. And so it's been a very hectic and heavy and sad uh, period. We've also had lots of incidents of violence in our schools where learners were pointing guns at teachers. We also have an incident where learners were just... Uh, joining in assaulting and attacking a teacher in, here in Gauteng. So it's been a very difficult period. And we had to relook at what are the protocols, where the gaps are, but we've decided with the Deputy Minister that within the next 10 days we have to call an, an urgent meeting with the um, Department of, uh, with Minister Australia's Department, Social Development, because some of the problems are really more for your social psychosocial problems with learners. Um, did the minister at all talk about whether or not they'd be engaging the unions? Because we know that um, the unions also sit with a majority of uh, these complaints around how they're being threatened by learners, but more often than not, teachers being unwilling to come forth with that information because they face even further victimization um, and threats once they've actually laid an official complaint. I think it's one of the options that they are trying to explore. So they will have this multi-sectoral uh, gathering, a colloquium, where they will try to look at these options, what can be done in terms of the laws, the conventions, the protocols, what can they just tr try to change in order to be able to deal decisively with this issue. But also, more importantly, she spoke about 18,000 schools that have partnered with police stations to promote the issues of safety, but also there's a very great deal of concern from her side. The anguish was absolutely palpable. I mean, she was saying, look, it's really sad that every now and then you'll see this video circulating on social media. And, uh, I mean, the teacher's choices here are very limited, and they really don't know how to deal with it. Because she said from the time when she was uh, a lecturer tending, uh, training teachers, so there was a point where... One of the issues is about the conduct of a pupil. So if you have this misbehaving pupil, you can't really do anything. It's really hard to teach them. And also, going back to that particular incident in Zerus, I mean, she said they're dealing with a case of a child who's, who's having a very bleak moment because 
at first they were thinking that perhaps he had taken some drugs, but this, you know, a strong degree of stubbornness. So they really don't know what to do. So they've called um, the social uh, services to try and assist this particular Lena, who is now in custody, of course. What, what do they see then as the role of parents or guardians um, of the particular learners who may be perpetrators of some of this violence that, that, that is being experienced by teachers? I think it's a very same message, Kathy. They've always been spreading and saying, if you're a parent, you must make sure that if there's any irregular conduct from your child, you should uh, perhaps try to address those issues. So it's something that we have had before. But also, more importantly, they talked about the spike of the abductions. So they're saying if you're a parent, you must make sure that you are vigilant, you, you look after your child. But also, a lot of issues the minister spoke about, Kathy, is also the curriculum itself. So they're looking at the textbook diversity. They're looking at issues, for example, in in terms of the questions that are asked uh, as a way of promoting um, you know social cohesion in South Africa how do we avoid having some very offensive material in some of the books but also more importantly something that has been hailed as a victory they're looking at uh, introducing Kiswahili as an optional language so it's another very important initiative from the side of the department to make sure that the pupils are integrated at least to one of the most well spoken languages in Africa, it's also recognized by the African Union. All right, well, we certainly take uh, more time in the week to explore those changes uh, to the curriculum so that uh, even the parents and the learners at home uh, may be, you know, may be affair with what the changes are going to be. Uh, ENCA's Kylie Kumalo.